Hi, welcome to Messy and Perfect Life with me, Lee. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, do it right now and hit the bell so you get reminders every time I drop a new episode. Uh, I'm so excited to introduce my next guest. His name's Andrew Nguyen, and we had an organic meeting and really dig each other. And he's here today. Let's welcome him. Hello, Andrew. Hey, Lee. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so happy to have you. Um, so first of all, I said Andrew Nguyen, but you right. are a really super sexy, hot DJ. And um, what is your DJ handle again? Andrex. Andrex. Yeah. So it's like Andrew, but you change the W to an X. So. But there's a three Andrex. in there. Well, there's, yeah, there's a three in there. Um uh, a friend of mine a long, long time ago said, hey, we should give your name a twist. Before it used to be just, there wasn't a three, there was just an E. And then my friend suggested we put a three in there to give it a twist. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, is it Andre 3X? What is it? You know, it kind of kind of makes it all, uh, a, an interesting, um, it, it, makes it, it makes people think about it a little bit. Yeah, it so. is interesting because I was like, hey, what's up, and 3X? And you're like, right. it's just yeah. Andrex. <laughs> right. I was so, feeling yeah. really hip hop. It, it, you know, it, it's kind of, um, it's a lot of things. I mean, it's in the music world and the art world, I think, especially now, um, numbers in, a, in, in, a, in an artist name, it does something. Um, and I, you know, for me, I, re I connect it with like the whole electronic digital age as well. So, it's like yeah. binary, you know, like, like code almost. It's like Prince turning his name into a symbol. When when he did that, was it just actually his name was symbol? You know, I'm not too sure about that. Um, what I read was he didn't want to be labeled at all. Not, he, didn't, he didn't want a name. I think it had, what, it had something to do more with that without... You know, it was on a, a different... I'm just what I am. I'm not yeah, exactly. even... Uh, you can't label me. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, I kind of feel like that. I feel like that. I think I'm going to think about what mine is. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to be a symbol. Yeah. I don't know. Will you help me work on that after, maybe after the show? Absolutely. I mean, it's very, <laughs> you know, it's a really, it's a really, really interesting concept to me because it took me a long time to come up with my name. And uh, I, personally, I feel like it made a really big difference in my career. Um I mean, you know, people come up with a lot of um, it, it conjures up a lot of things in people's perspective and imagination just in a name. Right. Yeah. So it's it's very small. It's small detail. That a lot of people when I first started, I uh, I didn't give much thought about it. But after a while and after observing a lot of um, artists and brands, I you know, I realized that. Um, it, it, it makes a, a massive, massive difference. Some people like Gary V says, it doesn't matter. Gary V just says, you know, come up with any name, you know, just make it happen. The, the action matters more than the name. So I think it's both. Yeah, I do think I, I, what I think about what Gary V said is a lot of times people get stuck, right? I can't right. move forward because I can't think of a name. And he's like, right. screw the name, go. Because right, it, right. once you take action, your forward movement, things just start falling into place and, and, and organically you come up with it as opposed to, I can't push go yet. I can't push start because I can't think of a name. I mean, what's hot enough? What's cool enough? And he's like, that's a bullshit, like procrastination kind of thing. That's, that's kind of the vibe I get with that. True. Would you, yeah. Uh, and yeah. I think with the, with you, something I'm going to say that I've observed about you is you put a lot of thought. I'm fly by the pants, like, woohoo, let's go. And you're like, whoa. Let's, right, let's yeah. really look at this with all aspects. And I really appreciate that. It's it's I'm learning a lot from you that way. Well, I mean, we're um, we're almost like like at opposite ends in a good way, though. Totally. Um, you know, I, I, I do have uh, a challenge of being like a perfectionist, even though now, you know, I know that being a perfectionist can cause procrastination, delays and and many, yeah. and, you know, and a lot of times there's no such thing as a perfect anything, right? Never. Yeah. That's why so I love my I podcast. 
it's, it's like letting it's, yourself be messy or not ready, just getting in it and, and learning as you go. But, yeah. you know, procrastination, I mean, perfectionism is the sexiest procrastination. Yeah, <laughs> I want everything to be so perfect that, you know, I can't start yet. Or, you know, I'm just really thinking this through. It's like, what? Just go, you know? So I yeah. think that, I think that, I'm impulsive sometimes. Yeah. Right? right. Which is also like gets me in some trouble. Right. And oh, you know what I didn't even start with that right. I keep forgetting? Yeah. Will you do this with me? My yeah. three grounding breaths. As soon as I was like, I'm impulsive. I was like, oh, what helps me with impulsivity? Oh, breathing. Would you right. join me in three breaths? Absolutely. I forgot to I keep wanting to bring that back. I did it in every episode in the first season and I keep forgetting it, but I need it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for reminding. Cause I, I, you know, I, I was in the habit of doing that for like a good two years and then it kind of fell off, but it does help a lot. The whole breathing. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it together. Now let's put okay. our feet on the ground. And I say like your legs are uncrossed probably cause usually just girls cross their legs and um, sit up straight, roll your shoulders back. You don't want to sit too straight that it's rigid, but just comfortable kind of opening mm -hmm. your chest and you can have your hands down on your lap to get grounded or up to receive. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put them down to get grounded. And we're going to do three breaths. We're going to go in through our nose for four, hold for two, and exhale out of our mouth for four, releasing anything that no longer serves us. So we'll go in through our nose. Hold. Exhale. Ah. I'd like to hear your exhale, please. Okay. In through your nose. Hold. Exhale. Ah. Didn't really hear anything. Final breath in through your nose. Hold. Exhale. Ah. Oh, I heard a little something there. Might be by microphone. It's a little low. Oh, oh that's Might true. And you're not right up. You don't have yeah. a microphone in your mouth like I do. Right. Yeah, I need to get one of those. It's funny because people... um. It does feel good, right? It feels so grounding. It, it, it feels amazing. It feels, you know, you're right. It, it, it kind of, it was a very, it was gentle, but clear reset. And I kind of, yeah. I like that description. I yeah. kind of goofed it up because I was joking with you during it. Normally I don't, I just really get into the breath. So I kind of messed up my own jam with that breath. But anyway, I want to be, I, you, something about you, I just like to play with a little bit. Because you're so serious and I'm so goofy. Or you're so, yeah. not serious. Yeah, you, yeah, you're kind of serious. Would you describe yourself as serious? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm both. You know, I'm definitely, um, I, I have a dark humor. A lot, a lot, you know, that's what some people would say. Um, so I would, I mean, I don't know that describes me by being both serious and um, comical. But I mean, I, I think, um uh, yeah, for most of the time, I think being serious allows me to stay grounded and focus. So it, it's something that is, um, I think it's an automatic thing. And but I do, I mean, I you know, like I love being, you know, I love being light, right? Um, so it's a, uh, but you know, being light sometimes, uh, you know, it, it's 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 a. Um, it's a, it's a balance where, I, you know, being light is, I usually don't catch myself being, being that way. So I, like, what does being light mean? What does that look like? Light, light, light to me is like, um, uh, carefree and, uh, you know, and, and usually when you're carefree, you know, like you, you just being goofy and f when you know, are you comical. carefree when, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm carefree when, um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I mean, I, since it, I've known you, yeah. you're just, you know, it's you're very thoughtful and yeah, you take yeah. things very not literal or serious, but you re you put a lot of thought into everything. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And 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 for me, if I can't have fun, I'm not doing it. And I just am here to freaking have a blast on the planet and well, the you're right. It's that's number one. But once no, identified... I'm just saying that I wasn't saying that not you or me. I was just saying that's what drives me. Right. What drives yeah. you is this kind of 
not perfectionism, but this professionalism of what's going on and what we need to evaluate. I'm like, stop evaluating. Come on. But you're teaching me. Sometimes you need to evaluate, Lee. Slow down. Well, I, you know, I think, I think, um, everything I do is fun, right? Cause, cause, uh, my, my profession is music. Um, uh, I, you know, that in itself is like, uh, like to me, it's so many things. It's, um, it's a gift. It's a luxury. Uh, cause so many people aren't able to do it for so many reasons. It's a very challenging, um, endeavor. It's a challenging space, career, profession, whatever you want to call it. Um, so when, you know, I, I got into it purely because of passion and because, because it was fun, but let's I talk think, about when you got into it. When did it start? How old were you? Uh, 15 years ago and I was 30. Well, I'm 45 now, but I actually got into it, uh, when I was, I would say six, my, um, my parents had a, um, uh, had a stereo system. I used to play with the stereo system. And my uncle, around seven, eight years old, he gave, he gave me a mixtape. And then um, I started cutting up the tape and taking two tapes together. And I started um, connect, cutting one piece of tape and taping it to another piece of tape. And then I found out that when I do that, I'm taking songs and pieces of one tape and bring it to another. So it's kind of like a I was remixing or re or editing these songs that I was using purely by cutting tape. And wow. uh, I, I thought it was really a, an interesting thing that for me to be able to do that, I don't know how that came up in my head, but I just started doing that. I think one day um, something happened and the tape came out, uh, you know, the old record. I mean, not, not that or, or, or the older tapes, but you know, the regular cassette tapes. And then I started looking at these tape and I'm like, what, how does this contain music? And again, I just started playing around, cutting it up and splicing them together. After that, I was 12 by my, my mom bought me a piano because I kept on telling her I want to play music. And uh, she, she was classically trained also. So she thought that, you know, that she, she loved that idea. So she bought me a piano. I took lessons for about two years. I didn't learn anything. I was horrible taking lessons. I wasted all her money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, wait, wait, where did you grow up? I grew up in uh, Orange County. I grew up uh, in Santa Ana, Westminster, Garden Grove. So uh, California. And then where'd yeah. your mom grow up? My mom grew up in Saigon, Vietnam. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I was born in Vietnam. I, ca- I came I came to the States when I was about two and a half. I was a refugee. My whole family was a refugee. Wow. So, so what's going on right now in Ukraine and how people are being displaced and going yeah. from you know, for they're, they're leaving Ukraine, going to Poland or Germany and as refugees. And then some are being taken in and then, you know, and then and then uh, placed in different countries like the U.S. So that's what happened to me, literally. So, I mean, what's going on in Ukraine? Like it like it totally, totally moves me beyond like, Aww. you know, it's it's hard to describe because that happened to me. Like, you know, my, my whole family had to hit reset on our whole life because. You, my my family came. Just imagine if your family had everything, had a, had a home, had a business, it had years of uh, of money, a legacy passed down from generation to generation, and then another country invaded and took and just ransacked, destroyed, and took that over. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, my you know, family had oh. had a you know we had a hotel business. My mom's side had a hotel business that that all got taken away. We had a home. We owned a home that all got taken away. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, yeah. the other night, um, the president, I think, of, of Ukraine, mm. I didn't know if it was called the president. Yeah, he he was talking about remember 9-11. You know, he's talking to Congress or and he said, remember 9-11. He said that was one night where two buildings got hit. Mm. And it devastated you. This is happening to us every day for three weeks. Right. Yeah. And I was like, and then when you see the faces of the children crying in their mother's arms or the pregnant mother that they're carrying off and you find out her and her baby died. And to hear your words about seeing that and how it affects me. Like right now I have complete chills because it's, it's just, it's so unimaginable, but that was you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, um, 
it, it's it's a really tough thing for me to watch. And you know, people have commented and said, "Hey, you know, you shouldn't, you know, like that's their business, and you, you don't know the history." And I'm like, who cares about this history? No, so there's the no kids history. are getting killed. Yeah, children and women are getting killed. Kids, yeah. unborn children are getting killed. Yeah, who cares about politics at that point? You know that's what I mean? Right. Like, that's okay. right. It's it's a weird thing for people to tell me. Oh, you don't know the politics behind it. You don't know there's some deeper thing going on. Some deep. I'm like, I don't care. Some you of know, these people, you know, kids are getting killed. You know, Andrew, I think that anytime people are like, you don't know the politics, they're not looking in the faces of the people who are dying or scared or crying or lost. Yeah, I, because the minute that, you connect with another, war? you know, I came from a war torn country, so. Yes. <laughs> What happened to you, you know? guys? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit special right now, but tell me who came in and did what to you that you had to flee? It, it was a very similar conflict, like Ukraine and Russia. So, you know, uh, North Vietnam and South Vietnam, they were two different, they were two separate countries. And um, the North, which was communist backed, uh, this is around the 60s. I don't know, I don't know exactly. I don't remember exactly what year, but yeah. the, the North, which was communist Soviet back, wanted to join both countries, both the South. South was democratic and was U.S. backed. And that they, they both went to war, basically. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, who's going to I mean, it's like, well, I, I wish this would be like David and Goliath, but. Russia's whole thing is to be the most powerful. So they have the biggest everything and the meanest every, you know, and it's, yeah, it's just, it's devastating. I, I just feel like all I can do besides donate right, the cash right. when I have it available is to pray. Just every time I see something that hurts my heart, it's like I almost am watching the news right now just to know who I'm praying for. I, you know, I, I think, I think the most important thing also, one of the most other than donating is awareness and posting. And then, um, you know, just putting like, just, I mean, I regularly post in my stories, something that moves me. And, uh, you know, somebody is funny. Somebody made a comment on my Facebook the other day. And he's like, Oh, don't just post empty words, do something about it. And I'm like, Oh my, this is, it's, it's that's it's, I think it's interesting what people have, you know, they, they even and you're like, I am, that. I'm bringing awareness to it. Yeah, Troll. exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, it's like it's it's but, you know, it, it it's like um, it didn't really bother me. But I, I I I I thought about posting. I thought about that before. I am. You know, I also donate as well. But it's just interesting that I just didn't want to defend myself for something like that. Well, of but course yeah. not. But you know what I do a lot of times when people say kind of shitty things like, oh, you care so much. Why aren't you doing this? And I go, what a wonderful idea. Let's do it together. How do we right. get started? You know what I mean? I'm just like, all right, let's go. Big, big talker. I'm in. Yeah. Show me the way. What are you doing? Yeah. It's just, it's just, uh, well, yeah, it's negativity. I, I, you know, I just, it's, um, I, I try, you know, the thing is I don't react anymore to negativity. I just yeah. don't react to it. I just, I, I just step away. It's like, I don't know why you're feeling that way, but I don't want to feel that way. Got nothing to do with me. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I you know what I do? Cause I'm, I'm a spiritual teacher and, I'm trying to, what I work on every day is not to be affected from things outside of me, but always know that I'm here to spread love. Mm -hmm. So if somebody does write something negative, I think about it for a minute. Actually, I use a little bit of Andrew's technique. I don't impulsively react. Yeah. I think about it and I engage in a really beautiful neutral way where my audience can see how you can relate to someone who you perceive as attacking you, you know? And mm -hmm. I always just um, say, yeah, here was kind of my expect perspective or what I was thinking about it. And, you know, thank you for sharing yours because I, I feel like when people try and jab us or whatever, it's really about them. And I know that 100%. the people who are jabbing are hurting. And what is my job? It's to bring light to the world. So I feel called to love them but also show yeah. my perspective without engaging in the negativity, if that makes sense. I, I agree with you a thousand percent. My, my thing is most of the time I don't have, um, you know, I, I, I don't react period because, That's great. Of, you know, I, I, sometimes when you try to help people, 
it ends up backfiring also on you. Like, uh, you know, uh, so sometimes it, you never, you don't know when people are, they may not be ready to receive the help either. You know, they may yeah. not be ready yeah. to be enlightened that, that they're the ones that are in pain. Right. Yeah. Oh, I don't ever do that, but you know what? It's not your job. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's not your job. Uh, it's yeah. not your job to to help people, right? It's my job. That's my, my why I'm on the planet is to shine my light. So I never do it with the intention of helping them or changing them. But right. I do like to show a way of non-combative uh, communication that it right. is okay to have two perspectives and mm. that mine I, I kind of deeper more into love as I share more. And and I feel like that is my my job. I don't know why I say it like that, but I don't know. My kids used to say that job like y'all. Yeah. I don't <laughs> I want to get back to your DJing, though. Thank you for segueing with me. But um, I'll have to say, you guys, right now, follow him on Instagram. Um, it is A N D. Spell it again. A N D R three X underscore music. You have the sexiest. You you remind me of like Anthony Bourdain without talking and black and white, and. Just kind of, oh Billy Jack a little bit back in these movies when I was young that he just had black and white and he just walked around kind of barefoot and silent and absorbing everything. I mean he would kung fu people if they misbehaved and a little bit of grasshopper. Yeah, uh, you know I, Instagram is um, it's to for me it's a it's a, a beautiful it, it's it's such a amazing creative tool compared to all the other platforms like Facebook, YouTube, um, Snapchat, Twitter, I mean, and, and Twitter also. TikTok's the next closest thing. But, you know, wh what I like about Instagram and what, as a musician and ultimately as a creative person, I, I, I gravitate so much towards it. I didn't realize this at first, but you know, it is it is focused on vis visual and then audio, and the newsfeed. Unlike Facebook, you're you know you're not bombarded with advertisement. You're not bombarded. You don't. It's not blog based, right? You, like people aren't going on there, although they can. They're going for visual stimulation, right? Yes, they're going inspiration, motivation, visual, insta all the above. But it's visual and audio. And it's, it's great. It's like, um, you know, I, like uh, I, with Facebook, I feel like I'm getting a lot of, uh, I get caught up in news and I get caught up in, 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 you know, like complaints and drama. And with YouTube, I have to search so much to, to, and it's, it's all long form too. Right. So you gotta, the newsfeed is always recommending you stuff that you want to learn. And, Twitter, you know, their newsfeed is all like, again, it's all chatter. Quick you know, and comment. Comments comment, and yeah. quick. It's like a, it's like a, a forever text feed, you know? It's like, you know, it's like almost being part of the a, a, a group text with billions of people with Twitter. Wait, so, have you gotten, have you gotten into Discord channels yet? Disc no, no, not okay, yet. Okay, so on the Web3 and the NFT and the crypto space, they have Discord yep. channels and I'm just getting into them. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do. And things are moving really fast. And so I'm actually getting trained this weekend on, on how to navigate Discord channels, which I'm excited about. But that's a whole new platform that that's coming. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, you know, that's something that um, I've been meaning to get into as well. Maybe but, you could come over when I get my training this weekend. If you want to. That would be a great idea. Well, the you person's going to come in. I think, you know, for me, I, I don't get involved in a platform Unless I, unless it's something that is connected to um, work, right? SoundCloud for me was something I had to do, and Discord, yeah, Discord. Now that now getting, it is going to be connected to you because you are right. getting into this, right? Exactly. And that that leads you know that leads us into you know the next thing. I know I want to hear you know, more about your DJing, but I have to because this just organically yeah. came up. So um, Andrew and I have been. We, how did we meet? We actually met at, um, what's met his name's birthday friend, party? Sean. Sean, Sean yeah. Sean yeah, Peoria or something. Is that how you say his yeah. last name? Pereira. Okay, we, Pereira? I, th I was believe close. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much. 
So Sean is this really flamboyant, fantastic, high energy, beautiful person. And somehow we, I mean, not somehow, but we, he invited both of us to the swimming pool party at a hotel and we weren't swimming, but we were having cocktails and gabbing and sitting around the pool. And then tell me what happened because I love how you describe how I spoke to you. Yeah. So I came in, I came there a little like late and I was chatting with a few different people and I didn't get to meet everybody, but as we, as the, as, a, uh, as everyone was leaving, um, you and I quickly, uh, we saw each other and we, you know, it was like, we, we quickly said goodbye, but it was, it was, you know, it really like, it was very interesting because usually when I come, I go to an event, I say, bye, you know, I say bye to people. And sometimes I say bye to people I haven't even said hello to yet, even, you know, but it's polite to say bye anyway, especially if it's a small group. So we said bye and we hadn't really said hello yet but when you said bye to me you like paused and stopped and stared at me in, in the eye and you stared at me and i was like it, it it almost like uh that bye was felt like it was like a good 10 minute bye just because you looked at me dead in the eye and you acknowledged me and because of that i had to acknowledge you just through like you just just through like your your uh you know how how you looked at me and I, I and that's i think one of the very first time at least the only time i can remember someone did that to me mm. and it was pretty it was really really cool because it was like uh, you, you, you know through your presence through that through what you did your you know and it was so natural and it was so like um it was strong. It was such a strong, you, it's like, you didn't let me give you, you didn't let me do a drive by goodbye. You know, Usually, <laughs> like, oh, see you, bye. you know, it got nice to meet you. Bye. And I do that so much and people do that to me and it's normal, right? It's just normal. But for some reason you were like, hi, we haven't met yet. You know, I, I'm Lee and you know, I know we're leaving, but I just wanted to introduce myself. It was some, some something along those lines. And it stood out so powerfully. It was it's just, it, it was very interesting and strange and really cool. And, uh, you know, that never left my mind. We didn't exchange numbers or anything. But later on, uh, another mutual friend that I was meeting with, Chris. Um, yeah. To have dinner and you and, and, Chris, and you were there. And I was like, wow, there, there, there you are. <laughs> we well, what's, so funny, what's so funny about that is. Yeah. That Chris Breed and I were meeting about something with my nonprofit or something. He w- we were doing something. We were going to meet earlier. Mm. And then, no. Oh, yeah. He called me and he was like, I can meet earlier because I'm meeting somebody else for dinner. And I go, oh, well, actually, tonight I just made a random reservation at Craig's for three people at eight. But I'll cancel that and I'll meet you earlier because I want to talk about this this project and get the the resources you're sharing with me. And then he goes, wait. Craig's you got dinner at Craig's well, let's just meet the other get the other guy and we'll all three have dinner at Craig's and yeah. um and and then that was so funny right because I think when you're supposed to be with someone in whatever capacity whether it's a friendship a relationship work whatever it is um you can't mess it up right 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 so that right. Or initial thing you felt something from me and I am like looking at people you know looking you in the eye like who are you like yeah. I haven't, let me see what's inside there and you felt that, which is so beautiful. And I've never heard anyone really describe it because I, that's kind of how I roll, but I don't think about it. So it was really neat to hear the impact it had on you. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I thought about that for some reason that, that really, really impacted me and impressed me because, you know, when I meet people like the, the way, the way things process in my mind is, um, you know, it's, it's like, I'm like, a, it's like a computer. I'm constantly analyzing things, especially things that stand out. Right. Mm-hmm. And that stood out so much that I was like, wow, what, you know, is that at first I, I thought, is this something that she's practiced and gotten down, you know, because. Um, Did you think I, or is she attracted to me? Does she like no, me? Does she want me? No, my two things was like, is this something that some that, you know, we're, are you are you specialized in, you know, interpersonal relationships or, you know, were you, you know, like, because I've gone through a lot of training myself with like, um, 
you know, Anthony Robbins, um, uh, like all a lot of personal yeah, development yeah. books. I've, I've done a lot of that. So I thought, you know, maybe you were trained in that because it was done so well. At, you know, Toastmasters, mm. all this stuff, pers- you know, like so. And then I thought, no, that felt so natural, though. That felt so natural. So, uh, you know, it definitely wasn't. That's why that got me, because, you know, some people will shake my hand. They'll literally try to, like, break my hand. I'm like, no, nah, are you what are you doing? And, you know, that 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 gets my attention, too, but in the wrong way. You know? Right. Like, why are you trying to crush me and show me your exactly. power this way? But you were just like this, this very, very, it was such a strong, I, you know, mm. it, 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 it wasn't, you know, masculine is the wrong word, but it was strong in that sense. Confident. You know? Confident. Yeah, it was confident. And it's such a great way to make an introduction. It's such an amazing way. Just, you, you know, know, pausing for I love like that you were, 60 I, seconds. Yeah. I was like, and I'm looking all in. someone dead in the eye. And people making used a to that. proper introduction. Uh, and people aren't used to that. People are like, hey, what's your name? Oh, really cool. Bye. Hey, yeah. hi. Great right. to meet you. Too. Yeah, and I'm exactly. like, slow the fuck down. I, I do. You know, what lights me up is knowing that we're all connected, knowing we're all brothers and sisters, knowing that God, that the, the golden light connects everything on the planet. Mm. And I think that when we forget that we suffer, my life is filled with complete joy by looking in your eyeballs. Yeah. You know, by stopping and looking at you and going, what's in there? Who is in there? You know, outside of this thing that we see, there's so much more and so much beauty and we're all connected and there's so much love. And it's just like that to me is my fuel, like what lights me up yeah. everywhere I go. I'm just can't wait to look in people's eyes or just see who's in there or how can we connect because we're all connected. But I think a lot of times we pass each other with a this, but that could have been a beautiful collaboration. Totally. So I'm always like, who's here that I'm supposed to see? And then let me figure out why we're seeing each other. And then this led to stuff, right? With us. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, so we it's had, um, yeah, go ahead. I mean, the energy has been very, it's, it's, it's been fun. It's been dynamic. It's been amazing. Um, and it, you know, it's, it, it's been, it's been spontaneous and completely unplanned. So completely. I love it. It's, yeah. it's the most fun, like organic. And this is what's so magical. I want to just say this to, to the, the viewers or the listeners is that when you're open and you see people and they see you, there's a reason for that. And then we get into exploring it. So yeah. with when Chris Breed is this guy we're talking about, who's like Mr. Wonderful. He's just an mm-hmm. amazing man. He's opened all these fantastic restaurants and has a great nonprofit. And I was like, who is this guy? I want to be part of it. So then and here, all of a sudden he goes, I'm going to bring this other guy and we're having dinner. And it's the guy that I saw at the pool party. And I was like, Oh, this is meant to be. I still wonder why. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I thought uh, that, 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 that was a fun night. And uh, you know, I, I, you know, I don't have much expectations when I, uh, about anything, to be honest with you. I, I just, um, you know, I, I, I go with my gut. I go with my heart. And of course, I, you know, I, I think in a calculated way as well, but ultimately at the end, I don't have any expectations on anything right. because you, you never know. You can't predict the future, right? So I bet I put my best foot forward based on how I feel yeah. and what my brain is telling me. And then I, you know, I go, I do my best and, you know, I let, I let, I let uh, the chips fall where they may in this situation. You know, it like we connected very well and it's been snowballing. And um, I mean, we got a lot of cool things coming up, uh, you know. I, I have I'll to let, share I'll a little you... bit about him. Yeah. So yeah. so um, I was um, introduced to this guy named Tillman Holloway, who mm-hmm. is the first person to have NFTs on the Bitcoin platform. Now, before I really understood it, I thought, oh, wow, it's somebody at Bitcoin must really like him to offer him the only spot. But then as I've learned about it, I was like, holy hell, no one is the top person at Bitcoin. It's owned by the people for the people. So, Wait a second. How the hell did he get on it? And I recently asked him and he said um, a lot of um, code and a lot of money put into working the codes, right? that he found a code in the only one in the world, as far as I know, 
who is mm. going to have NFTs at this point on Bitcoin, which blew me away. Anyway, met him and he was he was having this, um, you know, launching kind of in a big way. I think he's already I know he's already launched, but he's having this big thing in at the Bitcoin conference in Miami in April. And I was bringing him some people in back when I was not grounded at all and running around like a chicken with my head cut off. And he was like having the meetings that it got too big and everything just stopped. And I was like, what the hell just happened? But the one person that I brought in, Andrew, is the one person he's working with. So Andrew and I have kind of added to our, our friendship this working relationship now because I brought him in and kind of helped navigate the deal with him um, to work for NFT Glee. And I just have to say one more thing and then you can jump in. So Tillman Holloway is hosting the whaler party the last night so it's going to be a specific amount of people who's paid a, paid a specific amount of price it's going to be kind of off the hook and andrew is djing that last night at the bitcoin conference in front of these really influential influential people in crypto right it's a uh, yeah absolutely it's um i'm, I'm really excited about it because i haven't i haven't taken a gig since the pandemic since 2019, well, 2020, New Year's was the last event I took. And that wasn't much of an event. I was in Asia. And um, let's see, yeah, that's 2020. Yeah, two, yeah, I haven't taken an event since then. And that time, you know, the pandemic kept on um, in Asia. It was like they were they were opening and reopening just like in just like everywhere yeah. in the world. So there was a there was a little window when um uh the you know bars and restaurants and, and nightclubs were allowed to open and they had and it was on new year's and it, it opened but on that day there was a spike and then they they closed it so it wasn't that it wasn't right that great of an event and that's a, that's another reason why i haven't played for the last since the pandemic because i saw it opening reopening and it, you know, it really kills the momentum. And also you don't feel safe. <laughs> well, right? also, I want to say this is the opposite of that. Right. Right. right this right. is got a big momentum. It's going to be cool people there. Um, the venue's gorgeous because I didn't even know what it was, but you sent it to me. Yeah. I, I mean, the time it couldn't be better. You know, it's like we are finally getting past covid that's that's the, that to me that's the that's the you know the big thing too that we don't have that um we don't have that looming over our heads you know yeah, as for far as, DJ that yeah. cripples your I mean that cripples your stuff cuz you can't go play it, it does a lot of you know it does I mean look there was just a lot during that of, time you know for a, I was one of the for me a lot of clubs and DJ still went forward but for me, I, I didn't feel that it was, was it was worth the risk because I didn't want to risk catching it and passing it on to, uh, yeah. you know, a family member that had maybe had a weaker immune system. So, yeah. And we didn't know much about it at the time, but we're, I think we're at a point now that with, you know, with all the vaccines and then the treatments and everything where I feel 100 percent confident now, I, you know, I, I don't feel like um, it just feels really good. And the country yeah, it feels and good. We're coming out of this whole thing with COVID. Of course, now we have Ukraine, but still. But wait, wait, I want to talk about, I want, because we can go on and on about all the stuff right. that we, we have to deal right. with in America, but I want to talk about you or in the world, actually. Um, so you're going to be in front of, I think it's like the top 1% of Bitcoin owners in, in the America, and they call them whalers or something like that. Right. I'm not even sure why, but it's something to do with your big yeah. in the space. Well, I I mean, I, I think if I remember correctly, um, the people that have access to the after party are all are all people that have a whale pass, and the whale pass, I believe, is currently going for sixteen thousand. Yeah, so, but also I found out that whale a whaler is a specific term in the cryptocurrency space. It means they're yes. at a specific level or percent of like the yeah, top I mean, millionaires. They, they the or, highest holding of Bitcoin or, or crypto. So my yeah, gosh, I mean, I'm so you know, excited. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, like the, the, the uh, you know, Bitcoin or crypto whale 
is someone that, um, I mean, I, you know, for me, it's not, not just because they have, all, they own a lot of Bitcoin or crypto, but you know, they, they, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because this is such a, um, you know, crypto in general is such a, it's still a new thing, right? It's only Bitcoin has been around for about 11 years. And 2009. In, and yeah. And, it, you know, the adoption is still occurring. Mass adoption is still occurring. And for some, for the people that have, have, you know, uh, uh, got in early, well, right. Have done well for themselves. And it says a lot. It says that they were, it says th that they had the uh, early for foresight. They had the early conviction. They had they had the early um, belief. They had the early jump off uh, into from yeah. the unknown zone into this new space, and they're handsomely rewarded for it. Yeah, I mean, you know, put it this way: the chances of somebody taking a wild gamble and saying, "You know, I'm going to buy a bunch of Bitcoin," because it, you know, at, at any given time. There's always a million different opportunities that you could throw money into, right? But it, you know, you for know, someone to actually get it right with Bitcoin, and and it's like, wow, like you know, she, th that's that's interesting. That's yeah, very well, interesting. I was going to say there was a person, uh, Sheen, a guy who came on my podcast, I think like a couple podcasts before oh, this. Yeah. Um, Sheen was backpacking, like in in his early twenties, backpacking, and I'm not even sure where. And um, they didn't take the currency, but he saw that they took Bitcoin. He goes, he saw it somewhere else. Mm. So he called his sister and said, transfer all of my money right now into Bitcoin because he didn't know how long he'd be traveling or when he was coming back. And she was like, what are you talking about? All of it was like $100,000. He's like, yeah, just transfer all of it. So she did. And he had his money in there and he was traveling around and then he just kept it there. Anyway, today... He's a multi, multi millionaire and he has 21, 21 residential portfolio or something like he's bought 21 properties and a huge spread right now in Laguna Beach on the beach with six houses. And he's going to live in one and redo it and rent out the other ones. I was like in his 20s, bought into Bitcoin and now he's like out of this world. You, you know, it's it's really it's it's a very. It, it's it's a um, I, I I think crypto and especially Bitcoin is a uh, it's such an amazing um, investment phenomenon. Mm -hmm. You know, phenomenon. it's a cult cultural shifting uh, thing that's going on, and I mean, like the the in the in, in like you know, I follow a lot of traders and a lot, and a lot of people in the in the space. Somebody made a comment that was really really accurate. Uh, based on my, you know, observation, a trader I was, I was, I was uh, a trader I follow said, you know, you could literally make a ton of money by following the ninety-day trend of Bitcoin. In other words, you know, within a ninety-day, in like at least in the last six months, in ninety days, Bitcoin has dipped and peaked, like within ninety days. So. And yeah, people say too, hold it, hold it. Yeah. Don't panic or like the stock market, Absolutely. hold it because it's coming do. back. But, you know, I and mean, we could talk about this offline, but I've thought about this like a zillion, gazillion times because, you know, like, let's say it like, and I sent you a calculator too. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't know I, how I to really, use it yet. I got to get money in the, in the game first. Well, we got like, you know, we got, we, we got to talk about this offline because once I show it to you, and I, I mean, give me like 10, 15 minutes on the phone and it'll blow your mind away because the amount of money that you could make, if you just, it, you know, if you just throw it in there and leave it for 90 days is more than like literally anything you could make in the stock market. Um, you know, you know, when it, I get right now, my finances are kind of at the beck and call I, you know, my, my divorce is not settled. Mm. <clears throat> so it's like peanuts. But as soon as it's settled, I'm going to get not a ton, but I'll get like some money that I can pay off my credit cards. Right. And then I want to invest. I'm going to pick a certain amount to, to invest in, in Bitcoin. Mm. I'm excited. Well, oh, speaking of that, how long have you been in the cryptocurrency space? Like when did you get in? Cause I know you have some Bitcoin, right? Or 
Ethereum? I do, yeah. So this, I mean, it's, 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 so here, here's where being a perfectionist kind of screwed me up. So I was introduced to it about, I, I want to say six, seven years ago, six years ago. And I believe the price was around 300 per Bitcoin at the time. And uh, my brother introduced it to me. And I was extremely skeptical like everybody else. And uh, he was working for a company that was paying him in Bitcoin. Instead of getting cash he was or getting a check, he was getting paid on Bitcoin. And the company... How amazing is that? Well, you know, I, for... Again, I mean, looking years, back, I, like, I want cash, you know, like, how, yeah. you know, how, how do I know but this Bitcoin thing is going to be worth anything? You know, that, 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 that's like saying, uh, you know, to me, that's like saying somebody is going to I'm going to pay you in, in this cup. You know, what I mean, this cup that I made, this ceramic cup or I'm going to pay you in dishes, you know, yeah. like that's equivalent <laughs> to that. Right. I'm going to pay you in emails. Cash, bitch. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, Bitcoin at that time, you know, there's so many different things. Again, there's so many stuff constantly that are like hey we're gonna pay you this 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 is gonna be worth that you don't know but anyway so my brother introduced it to me and i'd heard about it through several different sources and i'm like you know i'm not sure yet especially in the technology space so many things come and go that it's hard so to you really... were you were doing your kind of like safety no yeah, yeah i did i was i was watching i was watching i saw it go up to 10 i saw it go up to 20 and I finally bought in. I finally bought in at 30. Yeah. Which is still a good price because now it's 40. It went up to 65 at one point. So I doubled my money at one point, but of course it dropped. Are you just leaving it? I'm just leaving it. Yeah. I was trading for a while and then I was going crazy trading it because my, uh, I was glued. I wasn't sleeping. I was like glued to the yeah. screen. And seeing Get it go obsessed. Up and down. So quick yeah, question. So Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting a little bit because no. I want to just touch on things. Absolutely. Um, so, sorry, not sorry. I guess I should <laughs> say. Um, but so do you have any NFTs? Have you purchased I don't any? Know. Okay. I have not. No, not, not yet. And what, you know, uh, how excited are you? Yeah, right. Well, you know, th that's, that's the, and that goes into this so, other thing that you and I are involved in now. So this, you guys, this, um, with Tillman Holloway and his NFT Glee company, they're creating uh, NFT of Andrex. Yeah. Andrew. Yeah. And so they're going to be pre-selling it. And then you guys can buy, if you're listening now, I would suggest you do buy his NFT because I think it's going to come out kind of at a lower price and then it's going to kind of shoot up a little bit later. So. Right. We'll we'll keep you informed, and I'll I'll be posting about it on my Instagram. If you don't follow me, it's at Lee Keckner on Instagram. Follow me because I'll be posting about it, and you guys can get in on one of his early NFTs, and you're going to have your own NFT. It's it's really exciting. It's real. I mean, you know, I'm I'm excited more about what it represents, and I'm not I'm not more, I'm not really caught up about the fact that it's a hot trend. I'm you know, for me, it's, it's not I'm, a hot. I mean, it's not a hot trend a because. Hot trend. Till, Tillman Holloway believes yeah. that a, and everyone will have their own NFT eventually, mm -hmm. and it will have everything on it, all of your credit cards, your birth certificate, yeah. everything, that you just have that, and that is your everything, your That's NFT. That's what's exciting. The fact, yeah. you know, so the, this company that, that, you, that we're working with that are, that's helping us create our NFTs, they, um, uh, you know, they're... What like their um their focus with NFTs is 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 using it as a utility. There's they're seeing it more they're they're seeing it from the utility standpoint, as opposed to some you know like uh, how many like, different things you can be a part of within a community. Yeah, because I mean, you know, the, the current the current you know currently what's what what's hot about NFTs is the fact that digital art is being sold in the millions. So I think a lot of people, and that's what kind of, you know, I'm going to be honest, a lot, a lot of, you know, that turned me off originally with NFTs because what hit the headlines was, you know, so-and-so sold their art or sold their meme for 400,000 or the first tweet, you know, uh, uh, you know, the first tweet was sold for like, uh, like $2 million. So I was like, you know, I think it was a lot more than that, by the way. So, yeah, some I can't remember, but my point I'm trying to make is, what's the utility other than, I see it 
you know, people are dropping money into it probably as an investment, right? But other than that, you know, like there's so many things, again, there's so many things you can invest in. You know, yeah, and when you also, th- Bitcoin. When you also think about, when you think about the future and yeah. that this Web3 is where you can actually be part of a community. So I think like Web1 was, you could look online and see things. Web2 was, you could look online, buy things and comment mm. like Instagram Web three is you can be a part of a community in a virtual world. And so as we're creating more of this virtual world and, uh, you know, eventually they're going to have the headsets to go with the virtual world where you're watching, you're in a stadium of people in your headset at a talk that's happening live, but you're sitting on your couch, you know? And I think that, that then I know they're also building big, I'm working a little bit right now with a company called, um, um, Zen baby, Academy. Mm -hmm. And so it's all the spiritual world and web three and they have the biggest, I don't even know what it's called meta lot. I mean, the biggest Mm -hmm. piece of of real estate in the virtual world that they're building a temple and all the people who they bring in are going to be teaching classes and everything in the different levels of the temple. So it's this insane world that I'm learning about, but it's so accessible to it's globally accessible and you buy an NFT to get into the, the community. You know, and that and that's that's another cool, you know, that's a, that's another cool utility about. And there's, I think there's still more, there's more that needs to be explained, and and, and you know, for people. There's to always get like, more to learn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. I'm about learning every day. To kind of unlock the the power behind it, but for me, it took a it took a while. But I think that the, the thing like that that it's been attracting me, and and gotten me to look more deeper into NFTs is the fact that. I can now sell my music as an NFT yes. as opposed to um, uploading it on uh, Spotify and making like like fractions of a penny on a stream, right? Yeah. So what happens is it puts the artist, the creator, the creatives completely in charge of their work. Yes. So there's no middleman yeah. like whatever. When you put up a piece of art, they can buy it. And then yeah. when they when they sell it, you keep receiving Right. A portions of it, which is beautiful. And it takes out all the middlemen and it puts complete creators a hundred percent in, in charge of their own content. There's no one telling yeah. what they can and can't do. It's amazing. It, it, yeah. I mean, it, it, it really is. I, and I think there's need, you know, there needs to be, um, well, this is all new. So I'm, you know, I'm excited to see, uh, we're in it. We're in it. Right, right, right. right. I mean, you well, got it, in a way before me, but now we're playing in it and it feels so damn good. And I don't feel like I'm on the outside going, that's too, I'm too old for that. I just turned 56. I'm like, you're never too old. It's never too late to get in the game. I'm educating myself and I'm going to dive in and swim with the whalers. Come on. Yes. So we're, yeah. we're it's almost wrap up time. What, what kind of music are you going to play there? Do you do like bum, 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 bum? Because I see some of your videos, you guys, you check him out. He's like doing like karate chops. <laughs> he, this is his move a lot. Uh, yeah. I love that karate chop move. Um, you know, I, I, I usually, so DJing t- it to me. You have to do it quick because we have to wrap it up. I, I, I know that you gonna play a variety of different things, but I, I base it on the demographic, what I think the crowd is, is going to enjoy. So long story short, I don't play stuff that people don't know. Right. It's going to be 20 gonna go to 30 year old men, mostly. Yes. But also, you know, what kind of music that I, you know, what, what, what area did they grow up in? You know, I try to kind of, and then, and then I try to play songs that are globally recognized. Right. Except we're just going to be Americans there, though. Well, maybe think, not. That's the thing. I'm, yeah, I'm going to yeah, take that back. Exactly. I think they're exactly. coming from yeah. everywhere. Crypto is global, and so, they like '80s. I know my kids kind of like the '80s, and they're yeah, they're like yeah. '20. I'm just you know, throwing they, that in because I want to hear '80s. Oh, I, I always play '80s. A- a- '80s. Everyone loves '80s, but it can't be all about '80s. It's got to be some '80s, no, right? No, hell no. Yeah, <laughs> you have to get symbol in there. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a little. I I try to throw in a little bit of everything and give it my own twist, Um, but it that's the fun part about DJing. There's a lot of thought. There's a lot of preparation in advance that goes into it. You know, some DJs like to play on the fly, 
and I don't. I like to no, you put you're way you're so thoughtful. And you, you know what I'm going to do to to be thoughtful? I'm requesting one of those plastic squares. Yeah. So I'm putting my go-go boots and just the whole night just dance like I'm at a rave right next to you. Does that feel comfortable night. for you? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. I, yeah. I mean, I love having people uh, around me when I'm DJing. I don't like to be in a situation where like. It's just you, you by know, yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Or I'll be standing I'm, next to you yeah. or near you dancing a little bit, but the not still in the show. The more people, well, you know what? The thing is, as for me, the way I see it is like uh, we are the show. It's not that I'm the show. Yeah. The, you know, it's all about DJ we, the whole community. room is the show. Yeah. It's like Bitcoin. Yeah, it's, Everyone's exactly. a part of it. Very, it. To me, it's very much community. It's very much community. I love you. So, we have to wrap up. Well, thanks for doing this. I, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, I, I appreciate that uh, we, we, um, we're getting the time to really, uh, you know, talk and, and share with uh, about each other to, to our, you know, to both our audiences. You guys check Andrew out, and he also has a company where he helps. What is it with? What do you do on social media management? Social social media media management management. optimization. Okay, and and can they connect through Instagram or how? People can contact me directly through Instagram. Send me a send me a DM, um, and definitely mention, but mention you, mention mention Lee on there, um, because mention me. yeah. 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 And also yep. we are are starting to work together to um find new really big cool hip venues and things to play at and you should check out his Instagram because he's amazing. He's the gentle thoughtful wanderer who does karate chop and freaking <laughs> kicks it. All right. I love you Andrew. I love you too. Thanks for coming on and I can't wait to party with you at the Bitcoin conference. Yay. Yay. Thanks Wade. Okay. All right. Bye. Signing off. Bye. Yeah.